Praise the Lord, the wonderful God. Today we are going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We are going to read from verse 17 to verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17 to 20. And if Christ be not risen, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. Even this life only we have hope in Christ. We have all men the most pitiable. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Now this is one thing that distinguishes Christianity. All religions claim the well called the messiahs, their prophets, their leaders, they all died. And their graves are on earth. None of them came back to life. Now, but Jesus died on the cross. He was buried. He spent three days and three nights exactly in the grave. And after that, he came forth. Not a ghost. A risen Jesus. Resurrected from the dead. Not some ghost that came out. Now, what's the distinguishing thing between Jesus and the rest of them, the resurrection, that talks about power. Jesus went down to Hades and took over the power of life and death from the one that pretended to control death and came out. You know, Jesus made a declaration, all power in heaven and earth has been given to me. And what for? That he will give it to us. And he gave the same power to every one of us who belongs to him. Now, we don't need to struggle with things. We can function in that power. But how many of us function in that power? But that's not what we are concerned with today. We are talking about resurrection. If Jesus is not resurrected, then there is no need for you to be a Christian. You might as well be anything else of your choice. Christianity is distinguished on that point. Because the distinguishing point is the eternal power of God. The power that death cannot control. Every other person who claims to be anything had been controlled by death, except Jesus. Jesus remains eternal, never ever found in any grave, but he lives forever. And he gives us an example. He says, the first fruit of those who will die in this world, that you die and you have a hope that you are going to be resurrected. One day when he comes back with his power of resurrection, everyone that died in him shall arise. But the rest, well, they are unto hellfire. Because he exercised that power and that power remains in him. Christ himself has arisen from the dead. I like what it says in verse 19. If Christ be not risen, then you have all men most miserable. If all of your hope in Christ is only what you can get in this world, then it's useless. You don't need Christ to become rich according to the context of the world. Do you need Christ to go and steal from your office? People are stealing and making billions of it. But if you were going to follow Christ, you wouldn't do the same thing anyway. Because you have a different line of hope. You have a different kind of life. And there is a future for you when this life is over. We used to sing one chorus. When this life is over, there is life. There is eternal life in Christ. Now what would happen to you? Do you have that eternal life? If you do have that eternal life, the only reason for which you can say, I have that eternal life, is because Christ himself has risen from the dead. If you call yourself a Christian, this thing must sink in. You have those Christians that say all religions are the same. No, they are never the same. They can never be the same. It's only Christ that arose from the dead. Until you find another person who arises from the dead, who resurrects from death, who had died and was buried 72 hours after that person resurrects and comes back to life fully, then we'll say that there is any other religion that is like Christianity. So when you say all of them are the same, they all lead to God, no. Jesus said something. 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. There is no other thing that leads any human being to God except Jesus Christ. And that is the distinguishing thing. It is something to give you wonderful confidence. I know I am on my path to God. I know I am in Christ. And because I am in him, I have hope. Not only in this world, but in the world to come. I know that because I am in Christ, eternity is mine. And anyway, while I am on earth, I am seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. If you had that frame of mind, why would you also subject yourself to little demons and think that they're ruling over you? Change your thinking. For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Let's come to realize the enormity of the power that is available to us as a function of the resurrection of Jesus. And once you have that sunken into you, you think differently and you act differently. Because you act according to what your thoughts limit you to. Not beyond that. But today I pray that God will open your eyes of understanding so that your thoughts will go a different direction. And I'm going to pray, Father, please open the eyes of my brothers and sisters. And let all of us who truly are your own children come to understand the enormity of what we have gained by the resurrection power of Jesus. That we will appropriate this power in every endeavor of our lives, in everything. For if Jesus could come from the grave, there is nothing that is limiting any of his followers. We limit ourselves by our thoughts. We limit ourselves by the things we have heard, some of the things we are taught. But Lord, I pray today that the scales fall away from our eyes. That the scales fall away from our hearts. That we'll have true understanding of the power of resurrection. And appropriate it in everything that we do. That we shall no longer be limited by anything. But we shall triumph in every situation. For he triumphed over the dead. And came and gave us that power. That we can walk in that power. Thank you for we are not miserable indeed. And we'll live fully unto you. In Jesus name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with you. Now and forevermore. Amen.